Hey, this is the Ken Ralston, Stephen Rosenbaum show of Effects Geekdom. We're going to talk to you today about how we did some of the effect shots on Contact, the motion picture. Crowds react to machine tearing itself apart. Okay, let's see what they're doing, those wacky crowds. This is a group of people, I guess, uh, that we shot in Florida near Cape uh, Canaveral that we were going to put a machine in the distance blowing up and coming apart. So luckily, we got a great uh, casting call that day and got a lot of great folks out there in their cars. So we had them reacting, screaming over a loudspeaker system when to you know, act as if the machine's blowing up. This, I believe, is our sky element that we decided to uh, add into the shot without the machine. Because the sky was pretty boring that day, we wanted to make it more interesting. Whether it's gray or sunny, we still yeah. want to do something with the sky to make it more beautiful. Especially when it's such a key scene in the movie. So now we have our sky and our people doing the duck and cover. Don't look too close, some people are laughing. Now we start layering in the machine coming apart again. This was uh, animated by uh, Eric Armstrong and some of the guys in his department. You can start to see the rough uh, placement of some of the pieces where they'll fall into the ocean. And then we have to add impact points for when that happens. Some of these splashes were shot to be used in different parts of the movie. Some of them were used in the ship scenes. High speed, uh, large splashes, that splashed up about 20 feet. Those were reduced down and put into the impact areas on some of the larger pieces of debris that hit into the ocean. This was also shot on the same night we did the rain for the ship and a lot of other elements that we had to shoot against uh, a black background. A very wet night. And we shot a variety of speeds and then we could uh, look at the film the next day and see which one we wanted to use. So now you can see the water starting to get layered in to where the pieces hit. And we could see if it was working for us, if the size was correct. Here's some uh, dust elements that were shot blowing up for a lot of different moments during this destruction scene. And this was shot on the Culver lot. This is the mat for the dust. So we could uh, mat it on top of the, uh, the background elements. We'll shoot these a lot of times at high speed to um, help the scale. These are relatively small explosions done on a stage. Um, shooting them at high speed helps give the uh, realism of s larger scale. And this is just a variety of different types of atmospheric effects that need to all be layered in to make sense out of the shot. And different materials too. There's Fuller's Earth, there's something uh, called, uh, there was like a chalk material that we used, diatomaceous earth, I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure if we use that. And a lot of liquid nitrogen mm -hmm. and other stuff. A lot of uh, upfront thinking has to go on as to what type of elements you need. We, we choreograph out some of the basic motions and, and the, the camera angles and then you really, when you go to these stage shoots, you have to figure out, okay, I want uh, this splash to go that direction, I want this dust explosion to go that direction. And you try to cover as much of uh, the angles as possible. This was, uh, I had some guys line up uh, along the along the side of this pool, this was in the middle of the desert, um, throwing rocks in here because I wanted little debris hits splashing into the water and well what better way than just having rocks thrown into a pool. We just would pull those off of the water surface. This was roughly the camera angle I needed and uh, we would just place them right into the scene for that appropriate shot. Now you can see them in the background starting to get layered in there, some of the smaller hits. That's from the stuff that they just did. And this was some pyrotechnics that were shot out at the same location at high speed, different explosions, and some of those were shrunk way down so it would look like it was in the distance and matted on top of and behind some of the sections of the machine. There was a variety of explosions that were shot, and then we would go through the film and pick out the ones we wanted to use. Uh, put them in the computer and then reduce them down and then place them where we wanted to use them. Often when you're shooting these stage elements you sometimes can expose as much as uh, 10, 15,000 feet. I think on the, some of the rain we shot almost as much as 20,000 feet. Let me tell you it's exciting to watch 20,000 feet of rain of which you usually end up with about you know 50 feet of it in the film. <laughs> 